Good afternoon, students. I'm sorry I can't be here with you uh, this afternoon. But uh, I thought this would be the best way for me to give you some information uh, about D2K in the o Associated Press Starbook version 2013. And I want to thank Derry Kaufman from your class who is recording me today. So poor thing, he's going to have to hear this twice, right? But maybe that will be good um, repetition, right? Ex absolutely. So we, you know, you've done A through C, and so now we're going to move on to this would be on page 74 in your AP style book. And if you look, uh, the first word I want to talk about is damage and damages, and it's at the bottom of the left-hand column. You know, we're p uh, students sort of have problems with this one as they think about a tornado causing all this destruction, houses being uh, torn apart, and they think of that being a plural like damages. But really, uh, all of that de death and destruction would be damage. Uh, damages are what a court awards in a, in a lawsuit. Now, if you'll move to page 77, right-hand column, uh, we have the word dates as our entry. And so what we're looking for here is that when you have a, a date, uh, a month and a date, we don't need the ST like in March 21st. It would just get rid of the ST. And we don't need April 3rd RD, so we don't need that at all. The next one we have is right at the end of that column, daylight saving time. Now, part of the problem with this word is, it, this entry, is that we often mispronounce it. We say daylight savings time. So note that that's not, there's no S there. And then there is no hyphen in there. It used to be a hyphen, uh, and now AP is just making it daylight saving time. Uh, the next one we're going to is days of the week, and that's sort of a, at the top of 78. When we have days of the week, we're going to spell them out. So Monday and Friday would be spelled out. The only time you would not spell out a day, a day of the week is if you're in a tabular formation. You're doing some kind of a table. And then over on the right-hand side of uh, uh, 78, we have decades. And um, what I wanted to talk about with the, the decades is that a, a lot of people, here's what I see people doing. They will have, they'll have, um, they'll say the 1960s, and you'll see people writing it like this. The problem with this is it's, it, it, they're trying to make this a, a possessive. And the only way this would be correct is if you said it was the year of 1960, and you'd say the 1960s bottle of wine, right? That would be correct. What you're really trying to say is if you're talking about that decade, you'd say the 1960s. And then if the 60s, were t we were talking about the fashions of the 60s, you might put the, um, make that plural possessive. But that's the big problem I see with that. The next thing I, si I see is sometimes we talk about just the 60s. And you, you start off with the 60s, right? And then you need an apostrophe here, which is literally saying, um, I've left out the 19. And this is all you need if you're just saying the music of the 1960s, uh, the music of the 60s was good. Now, if you're trying to make it plural, it's going to be like that, okay, plural possessive. So this is a weird one, I know. I see this. This is in my top 10 hit parade of uh, wrong things to do with the decades. Um, the other thing is sometimes we might say the mid-1960s, and so we're going to have mid-1960s, and that would be the correct format on that one. Um, on uh, page 79, left-hand column, we have the defendant. All we're talking about here is how is it spelled. Usually people mess up here and they put an E and T. Down, uh, now we're going to go over to a couple of pages, over to page 80. Top of page 80, and we have the word demolish and destroy. Uh, what I'm talking about here is something can, uh, the, it is absolutely redundant to say, totally d demolished or totally destroyed. Um, 
so just if it's demolished, it's, it's gone, right? So, so be careful of the redundancy. And then over the right-hand side of that page, dependent. I love to put these on the same slide. Okay, this is why English is so tough, isn't it, right? Give me the reason for that one. All right, the next one we have is different from and different, uh, th differ with and so forth. That is on page 82. And um, we have uh, the, the different always takes the word from, and that's the bottom of that page. And then below that, to differ from means to be a, a, a unalike, and differ with is to have a disagreement with someone. Um, on the top of the next page, we have the word dilemma. And here's how people misuse dilemma. They, they will say, if you had a, a dilemma between chocolate cake and strawberry ice cream, I don't think that's a dilemma. I think both of those are pretty good things. Dilemma is a, a choice between two bad things. And you'll often hear people refer to the, the cliche as the horns of a dilemma. So if you're looking at that longhorn steer, he's got two bad things right going on there. So be careful about how that is misused. This cartoon says, cartoon says um, what's wrong, Earl? Why aren't you eating your breakfast? And he says, I'm on the horns of a dilemma. We've got this little jug of pure maple syrup, you know, the good stuff. It takes four maple trees, each of them at least 40 years, to make enough sap to yield just one g gallon of this syrup. And she says, so? He says, so I'm pondering the moral and ethical implications of pouring it on ego waffles, right? Uh, dimensions is right underneath dilemma on 82. And notice that we're using figures and we're spelling out inches and feet and so forth. Um, so that one's that was pretty easy to, to remember. Then we have directions and regions, which is the last entry on that page. Now here's the easiest way to remember this. If you are talking about how a, 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 a way that you're going, I'm, I'm going to go east on I-30, well then that's going to be lowercase. But if you're talking about I'm, I'm going to the east, or I'm going to the south, that's a region. And then we were going to capitalize the S in south, or the E in east. On page uh, 83, we have um, disabled and handicapped. And um, I believe AP is doing a wonderful job on, on explaining when we would use that. The one thing I would say to you is that there's really no reason to use it and unless you know that it ha is important to the story in some way. Um, I also I'm giving you a handout uh, that is from uh, an organization that works with people with disabilities and it's, it kind of gives you the background of how people with disabilities feel about that. So I'm just going to let you read through that but one of the things I find very interesting in this new edition of the AP Style Book is that we now have an entirely new entry for mental illness. And we'll get to that when we get to the M's. Um, I just think that says a lot about our society and uh, how, we, how we're viewing it as, as understanding it as not something that you catch or something. You know, it's something that is a part of us. So, All right, will you go to the top of page 84? I, there's no rhyme to reason to this. I, I, I will tell you that. But we have disc and disc, one with a C, one with a K. Um, so we're going to use the word disc like anything that would be referring to a photograph, a photograph record or an optical Blu-ray disc and so forth. We're going to use D-I-S-K for anything that's computer related or like I slipped a disc in my back, that kind of thing. All right, discrete and discrete. That's a, a few, about in the middle of the page on, on 84. These both sound to the ear exactly alike, but they are two different words and mean two different things. The word discreet with two E's like this is when somebody's done something maybe bad and not being very, very good about it, right? Uh, one of my students said that it, it's like the words, think of the word sweet. Um, she's not being sweet about that. The other discreet means separate. So 
um, the horn in the orchestra made three discrete sounds, three different sounds. Uh, disinterested and uninterested. This is at the bottom of that column. Let me tell you um, what, what the difference is, and then I'm going to tell you how, how I would use it. Um, the word disinterested means that you are impartial. The word uninterested means that you lack any interest in it. You know what? I would simply use the word impartial, right? Because I think most people are not going to know what you're really meaning, and they're going to confuse those. I cannot tell you how excited I am about this next entry. Uh, this is a major, major change from, from AP since I learned it uh, more than 40 years ago. Um, for distances, which is on the right-hand column, it now says, always use figures. I cannot tell you how wonderful this is. And so it we used to be, you know, he walked four miles and we would use uh, F-O-U-R up to 10, you know, all that kind of stuff. So this is huge and, and a big change that I think is absolutely correct. Um, the next uh, page is uh, 85, last entry on that page, and we have dollars. So let me talk about dollars and how we would write this. The, um, I'll use the blue in here so you can see it. When we have money, let's say uh, something is going to cost five dollars, right? There is just no need to put that period and those two little zeros. That's more strokes, it takes up more time, and more bad things can happen, right? So if it's on the money, you simply are going to say five dollars. We, this, and I know this is confusing because we just talked the other day about since. Remember we said we're going to write out the word since, not use the number. But in this case, we do not use the word dollars. This, if you put a dollar sign and a five and a dollars, we're just being redundant. So this would be the right way. If it was a dollar twenty-five, it's simply going to be a dollar twenty-five, like that. Okay. Uh, do's and don'ts uh, on page eighty-six. The, I, all I'm looking for here is how it's spelled. It's just one of those little weird ones, and also um, dot com as well. The um, uh, the just notice the hyphen there is was more what I'm looking at. I did want to talk about the, mil the dollar signs. This, this is going to come up in uh, when we get to the M's, but I do want to mention it now. Um, this is, when we have millions, billions, and you're going to laugh about this. This is a comment on our society now. AP for 2013 has added trillions. Okay, I guess the debt's up there, right? Enough. But what we do, notice that in, if, if you, are you like me, when, particularly with trillions, you know, you, three million is going to be, whoa, 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 how many of these guys am I going to have, right? So it's much better when we get to the million that we will simply write it as that number, okay? The three and the million. And that will be dollars. But if it's a three million fans, that we would simply take out the, of course, the, the dollar sign. If you're on a, if it's, if it's like, this happens to be 2.7 million, you just put the point there, so. Um, I, I'm just kind of highlighting it here, and I'll hit it again when we get to millions and billions and trillions, right? Uh, Drive-through is on the left-hand column of uh, page 87. And uh, both the noun and the adjective, notice that we did this little weird thing with the through. I'm going to say to you later, you know, wh wh well, this one, it drives me crazy. You've seen the word donut, right? That's, that's not the right way to spell that, even though Dunkin' Donuts does it. The word, of course, is dough. That's what it's made out of donut, right? So tell me why we... Why we do make this, make this, but we say drive through like a drive through, yeah, uh, fast food place, yeah. Drowned and drowned, drowned and was drowned. That's kind of an interesting one, and that is the bottom of the left hand corner there. Um, this is the difference between a homicide and a suicide. So if somebody drowned, you know, they just jumped in the pool and no fault of their own, they drowned, okay? 
But a was drowned is saying that somebody held their head under, and now we've got a difference between a, um, a, a homicide and a suicide. You know, I know a lot of times you'll say to me, oh, but I've seen it that way. Mm -hmm. I know, but that doesn't mean, it doesn't mean it's right. Drunk and drunken, let me talk about that, and that's on the right-hand column. Um, the correct adjective form is the word drunken. So a person is charged not with drunk driving, with, but with drunken driving. Um, I know that you have heard of Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. I know it. And, and par I, I'm going to hold them responsible for this, not using the adjective correctly, all right? But, um, but the correct form is drunken driving. Uh, I, several years ago, I pulled this Lindsay Lohan uh, article out of the paper. And here's the funny thing. I don't know what year it is, and I think she's done this every year since, so it doesn't really matter. But it gives you an example here of the, she, that on a misdemeanor, drunken driving. Okay, so that is the correct uh, form of that. And then the last uh, one I want you to do on that page is the word dual. And this is the EL, not the AL. And this one is when you're going to fight people, right? Also, you can't fight among three people. Right. It, that's not a duel. Duel is two things. Right. Dying and dying. Uh, that's the last entry in our Ds, and there is a big difference between this. Let's look at the root wor words on this, okay? Um, we have the word, one word we have is die, and that means to change colors. Then we have die, which is to cease living. So, if you are uh, dying Easter eggs, that's this one. If you're dying to go to the movies, that would be that one. Um, the cartoon says, why can't words be spelled the way they sound? English spelling is insane. We all agree with that. Why is night, N-I-G-H-T, with a G and, and an H in it? That's crazy. Same thing with thought. If the bozos who invented words put any real thought into it, they'd spell it thought, T-H-O-T. I think that's the way y'all are doing it on, uh, in, when you're texting, correct? If words were spelled the way they sound, it would put, in, put out the spelling bee folks, it would put the spelling bee, bee folks out of work early. He says, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I, I know I mentioned this the other day in class, but I just wanted you to notice in the D's, dumpster is now a lowercase word. It has lost its trademark status. I just want to put this in. I mean, that's all there is to it. Um, desert, 275, and he says, see, it wasn't a typo, and there, of course, is uh, a little cactus thing here. Right? You know what the real word is, desert, desert, right, with two S's. Right. Now let's go to the uh, E's, and this is on uh, page uh, 89. Um, two people look at each other, three people look at one another. That's all we're looking at. Earth. This is kind of a funny one. This is a uh, couple down on that left-hand column. I know that you would always capitalize Pluto and Mars and Venus, right? Well, when you're talking about the planet, capitalize E and Earth. But if you're talking about the dirt, you know, he kicked his foot in the Earth, that's just dirt, and that would be lowercase. The next one we, we're going to skip over, and we're going to go to page 93. So 93 uh, right-hand column, the word either. I just love the way a a AP explains this, so I may just read it to you. Um, it's correct to say, uh, she said to use either door. But it's incorrect to say there were lions on either side of the, of the door. What we need to say, there were lions on both sides of the door. Right. So be careful about, about that one. And then we have the word uh, let's see, is it either? Either elderly, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I had a little Alzheimer senior moment there, right? Uh, elderly is at the top of um, page 94. And I guess as I've gotten older, I am um, a little bit more cognizant of what that means, right? And oh, it, it, when we've talked about why do we use race, uh, it's going to be the same thing, why do we use age? So we have ageism and racism and we have sexism, we have all that, that kind of thing. But I always, I, I love to have students will tell me a story and then they'll, 
they'll say something like, yeah, she was really old. And I'll say, how old was that? And they, oh, they were in their 40s. And then they take a look at me and realize that was not the right thing to say, right? Would you add on the right-hand column right before ellipsis, would you add illic uh, illicit and illicit? It does sound the same, doesn't it? But there's two different meanings. Um, one, of course, and uh, this is in the back sheet of your, of, of your study guide. This one, it, think of this being ill, bad, okay? So illicit drugs, bad drugs, okay? And this one is saying, I'm trying to get out of somebody something. Okay. This one w has been a struggle. Um, and I will tell you, we have seen it with a hyphen. Uh, email is the hyphen. Uh, AP is now settled on email without a hyphen. But e -term, any other e terms like e book and e commerce and so forth, they are hyphenated there. So, uh, let's see, can we go on. I will try to go on. We will try to go on. There we go. Embarrass. All I'm wanting to know two R's and two S's. Uh, the cartoon has the, this dad, he's picking up everything, doing the laundry, and then he says, Adam, you don't have to always uh, bow when I get down. It's embarrassing, right, as the wife comes in the door. Okay. Uh, immigrate, um, and this is going to be on the left-hand column of 95. The way to kind of remember this one is look at what we call the prefix. The prefix e is, is ex prefix, and it's saying out of. And the im is the in prefix, and it's saying into. So I immigrate from Russia. I immigrate with an i into the United States. Um, enormity and enormousness. I would like you to add that uh, on the right-hand column toward the bottom, right after England, if you would. And um, uh, to people, they try to get kind of highfalutin, and they use the wrong word. And there's a difference here. If I go into a cathedral and I go, the enormousness of this cathedral, right? That's the bigness of it. Enormity, on the other hand, is something terrible. The enormity of the tragedy, how awful it was. So let's take a look at this from the Denver Post. After the deafening cheers drifted into the rafters, after his tears dried, Henry, somebody here, sat in a whirring van on the highway, reflecting on the enormity of his accomplishment, while Beijing lights reflected on his gold medal. I don't think that's the right word, right? I don't even think enormousness would be the right word. Somebody thought, I'm going to use a big word, but they didn't know which one. And that was from the Denver Post, so it got through the copy desk as well. Yeah. In root. All I'm looking for in this one is um, two words. And then below that, insure, 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 right, assure. Um, use insure with an I when it relates to insurance. The word ish, it insure with an E is when you want a guarantee. And a lot of students remember the, the, the E's, all the E's on guarantee, and that helps them with that one. And then assure is to give comfort to somebody. Top 10 hit parade of all time misused words in title. And that is going to be on the top of uh, 96. I, s I can't tell you, this really and truly, this is either the top five or the top 10 of mis misuse. Um, entitled means that you are guaranteed something. A student is entitled to uh, attend this class. Or, in, or uh, membership in the club entitles you to these, these things. If you're giving a title, a name to something, that is ti you titled it. The, um, he titled the movie such and such. Right? He titled the car such and such. Right? But uh, very, very misused. And uh, below that, I'm sorry, on the next page, uh, left-hand column, equally as, that's redundant. Just use one or the other. He's equally smart. He's as smart. And then we have everyone. We're going to, I guess we need to go over a couple of pages, don't we? Two, 
uh, page 100, right-hand column, we have everyone with uh, a space and everyone as one word. And we're going to use the two spaces when we mean every individual item. And then the everyone, of course, is the pronoun. And then right under that, would you add evoke and invoke? Evoke and invoke. And I've given you the um, definitions in the back of your worksheet. But um, evoke is, again, the emotion you're going to get out from somebody. And invoke is something that you are um, giving, if you will. Maybe that's a better way to say it. Um, now we're going to go to the Fs. So if you'll f uh, flip over to that, and we're on page 103, Family Names, left-hand column. Um, what we're talking about here is when do you ca ca uh, capitalize mother, father, mom, dad? That, that's a tough one. So I've come up with a kind of an easy way to do this. Um, if you can insert your mother's name, then you know that you're going to be um, using the capital letter. Now, if you were all here, I would turn to somebody and I'd say, um, so-and-so, what's your mother's name? And they'll say, Betty. And I'll say, um, OK, so give mom, give mom the cookie. OK, do I capitalize it or not? Let's put Betty's name in there. Give Betty the cookie. Yeah, OK. Now, there's another way to test this, too. Try putting a, it, it seems like when you put a, 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 a modifier in front of it, you know that it's, it's a relationship, not a name. So give your mother a cookie. Give your Betty a cookie. See, that's a relationship, so that's going to be lowercase. Further and farther, you probably heard this one somewhere in high school, didn't you? You know, it's a, it's a tough one, isn't it? Um, that we know that farther refers to distance, and further refers to uh, a degree of something. Um, so I walked farther into the woods. Uh, I need further time. I need um, that's amount of time there. And this says dollar falls further. Maybe it'll go low enough for us to to reach one, right? So. Phase and phase. This one always amazes students. They, they, this is where they say, gosh, I didn't even know that word exist. Again, an example of where it's, it's still the same, sounds to the ear the same way. The easiest way to remember this is uh, uh, that the toddler went through a phase. Okay, so it's a period of time. But phase with an F is uh, a verb. It didn't phase him. The test didn't phase him, so that would be an F. The cartoon says it has advance and obstruct. And, and the guy says, what worries me most is that it doesn't phase me anymore. And the cartoon got it right. If you will turn to 106, we're going to go over a couple of pages, the top of the les left hand uh, column. I, I hope you have heard this ex explanation before, but I'll do it one more time for you. When you can count individual things, you're going to use fewer. When you're talking about um, an amount, you're going to use less. So I have fewer minutes to get dressed in the morning. I have less time. Uh, this uh, dessert has fewer calories. It has less fat, you know, that kind of thing. Less taste. How about that one? And this one, it, we're, next one on 107 at the left-hand column, you know, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to, we're, what we're trying to do is the, the sexism, okay? Not all, all f people who fight fires are firemen. Uh, so the, if you would call it the, the non-sexist way to refer to them is firefighters. Now, the, the Newsy students will say, well, you know, what if it is a far man that got hurt? I think that's okay, right? But I think most people are trying to get away from using fireman altogether and just call them all firefighters. And I know with my Texas accent, fire is a hard word to, to hear. Right? Uh, first hand, uh, that is down toward the bottom of that left hand column. Notice that there's no hyphen uh, between there. And then on the right hand, almost immediately over from that, we have flare and flare. Um, the, the word flare, 
uh, like this. By the way, I have to always laugh about this. You know, in downtown Cheyenne, we have the flare shop with the uh, X-rated uh, lingerie and so forth. Okay, and and darn if they're not using the wrong flare. Uh, yeah, so this always confuses students for me. But um, the word flare over here is when you're, you're being ostentatious about something. Um, this one, though, is, um, did I say that right? No, I did, I, trust me, I did that wrong. The flare shop is right. Flare, this way, is when you have conspicuous. This is the bursting into flames thing. And can you guess that this is a new entry for AP? All right. So um, notice that we've got a flat panel or flat screen. The, it's a compound modifier. So it's a flat TV. It's a panel TV. No, it's a flat panel TV. I don't know whether you use these words a lot. Flaunt and flaunt. OK. Um, to flaunt. This one is to show disdain for something. You usually flaunt the law, and that's an example from the Denver Post. DAs flaunt new law on evidence, or flaunt, sorry, flaunt new law. Flaunt is when you're showing off. Oh boy, this next one, flyer and flyer. Uh, two down on that on 108. This, uh, yeah, this has got to be in the top 20, I think, of, of misused words. You know that handbill that you see people distributing uh, on the in the in the parking lot. That's a, that is a flyer. You'll see so many people using this. Say this for an aviator. So if you think of the root word there, it certainly makes sense, doesn't it? And then um, people that know something about horses know about flounder and founder. So this is where I normally, if I had you guys here, I'd say, who's who grew up on a farm? And, and knows the difference here. So um, founder is when an animal gets bogged down. And so that, that's that definition. Flounder means to flop around. So I guess technically the horse could, flop or could fl flounder and then founder. I mean, that's a possibility, right? And of course, there's a big fish named flounder. Uh, follow up, which is on page. 109, left-hand column. Um, I just I wish we could be a little bit more consistent, but um, it, in a way, this follows things that we talked about, like with kickoff and other words like that. When it is a verb, right, he will follow up on that prescription. Two words. The follow-up report, adjective, he, ha he has a follow-up with his doctor. A noun. So, adjective noun, hyphenated, verb, it is not. Forgo. Um, both of these are uh, pronounced exactly alike. And uh, on, this is on 110 left hand column in the middle. One of the ways students have told me that, that they get, uh, they understand this is that when you eliminate the E, as we did right here, that means to abstain from something, right? I'm getting rid of that E. And then forego means to go before. The cartoon has, it says, he says for, F-O, because there is another for, F-O-R-E, for those of you who blink off. Four o'clock, it's tea time, and uh, he gets, uh, he's on the top of a, of, of a golf tee, and he kind of says, he says, got to get spell check. And fort. Uh, that's on the top of uh, 111 on the left-hand side. Um, one of the reasons I put this in here is so many times our stories uh, here in Cheyenne will refer to Fort Collins. And so when you have the word fort, we just, we're going to spell out fort. Okay, we don't do the FT. And of course, I'm from Fort Worth, and I know that too. Foul and foul, right? Another one of those that sounds alike. I think this is brilliant. I had a student tell me the way she remembers foul, okay? And th this foul is the animal. Got the word owl in it, duh, okay. And this is like a foul ball or whatever. Um, this is called the foul up, F-O-U-L-Y. And two, I guess you would call them drunks or whatever. He says, I tried to go cold turkey. As far as I got was cold duck. So, I know, don't you wonder where I get all these things? This is a lifetime of collecting cartoons, right? Wow, I've got to talk about this. And this, 
Uh, you know, I, I've, I've said so often that it, we talked about courtesy titles the other day, how we have this evolution of, of words, and mental illness is such a good example of that in this one. And fracking has been all over the place. It first entered, I think, about uh, a, a version uh, or two ago, but look what's happening now. Um, it, it used, here's what it used to say. It used to say that you always would use the word hydraulic, frac hydraulic fracking, okay? And, um, and sometimes hydraulic fracturing. And that the industry, the oil industry, did not like the use of the word fracking. Um, so, it's, we're seeing two different, th well, I, I think what I'm seeing now is a new acceptance of the word fracking as being okay on a first reference. Fractions on what 11, the last entry there. Because in type, it's a little tough to be able to write uh, one half and words like that. So one of the things that we do is we simply say one third. One third of the whatever, right? We hyphenate. There's not a space here. I know it looks like it. So we, we uh, use the letters. We, I'm sorry, we use the words, and then we uh, hyphenate. Uh, f What's my cartoon say? Let me read it here. Earl, read me a bedtime Chico story. Okay, how about Mother Goose? And he says, okay, but no foul language. I had to get another foul joke in there. Freelance. Let's talk about that one. This is another one that, uh, when I was growing up, this uh, they had this was always hyphenated, and now AP's kind of changed a little bit. Let me talk about what, what we're talking about. We're talking about in medieval times, we had the knights who 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 were uh, loyal to a king, and uh, or monarch of some sort, and then we had the free lancers. So these lancers were people who they they would just whoever the whoever would give them the the most money. We have freelance journalists today, right? So notice that how AP is uh, f focusing this on 112. Um, we use freelance for the verb and the adjective. And you know what I'm noticing? This is exciting, and I did not notice this until just this moment, everyone. They have gotten rid of the, f the hyphen. New thing I didn't notice. Makes sense, thank God. Okay, that freelance is all one word and all occasions. Wonderful, good time. So then we get to full time. This is the bottom of the left hand column. Really, really a tough one, guys. And I know we don't know a lot about grammar yet, so I know this will make it a little bit tough, but when full time is before something, the full time position, okay, it is hyphenated. Part-time works the same way. But when it's after he works full-time, it is not hyphenated. And I think part of it goes back to that uh, compound modifier. It's not a full position. It's not a time position. It's a full-time position. I'm so excited about freelance. I don't know that I remember to go, what to go on. Oh, freelance and fundraiser, same deal. We have struggled with this. Sometimes it was hyphenated. Sometimes it was not. And so notice, and in fact, I love the way AP uh, does it. It says, one word in all cases, right? And that's the end of it. We don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, we now go to the G's, and we have gauge and gauge. Again, one of those that sounds alike. Um, this first one is, um, I don't think a lot of you would use this word. We call it a, it, you, it's a, like a security pledge that you would give. And this is the device that measured something. At the bottom of 114, the last entry, we have gamut, gantlet, and gauntlet. Ugh. Well, let me take the first one, because I don't think you're going to always mess up these two. Uh, a gamut is a range of things. So his emotions ran the gamut. That means he, you know, just from, from being scared to excited. Gantlet and gauntlet are two, li two, li two different things. A gantlet is when you flog somebody. I'm hoping that you're not going to write a story about that. But gauntlet is when the guy takes his glove off and he throws it down and we throw down the gauntlet. Okay? You also see the kind of the French feel of that word. Um, I'd also like to talk to you about the word gay. This is going to be part of what we talk about with races. 
uh, ageism, and so forth. Um, and this is the way AP is talking about this. It says, used to describe men and women attracted to the same sex, though lesbian is the more common term for women, preferred over homosexual, except in clinical contexts. Maybe you're doing a, a story about a study on homosexuality. It says, include sexual orientation when it is pertinent to the story. And we would say that about race. We would say that about whether a woman is married or not married, all of those things. Uh, GED, I, I'm bringing that up because in the college context, we very well may come across this. And um, it is a trademark name. So when you start on page 114, would you flip over to 115? Because there's a line I would like you to highlight, because I think that's really important. It says, GED should be used as an adjective, not a noun. Those passing the test earn a GED diploma or certificate, not a GED. So it's an adjective, not a noun. So that's a good, good thing to remember. Okay, girl. Uh, girl is on the middle of page 117 on the left-hand side. The thing, same things we learned about boy apply to girl. Nothing different there. And then would you go over about two pages to... Um, grade and greater. When you have the combining form, um, you're going to hyphenate. So the first graders went to school, hyphenated. The first grade classroom, hyphenated. Well, I just had to put grammar in there. I can't tell you how many people misspell grammar, right? Uh, this is at the top of 120. It's not gram er, it's gram r, okay, with the a. Another word we have a little bit of trouble with is gray. Uh, some people will spell it g-r-e-y, but the color is gray. Greyhounds are g-e, but all the gray that you're going to use is going to be that one. And um, below, let's see, what is, I've got to see what the cartoon says. Updated I I idioms. Everybody stay calm. We're not Googling trouble here. <laughs> Don't you love that? Derek is laughing. Thank you, Derek. Yeah. And then gray. Um, uh, great, sorry. Great is right under gray there. If, if you have a great, great grandfather, it would be great hyphen gra grandfather. So make sure you, because he might be a great. So you, I guess you could have a great, great grandfather. There you go. Okay. Um, and the pig says, hey, hey, stop tossing around your great-grandfather, right? which is the pig. On page uh, 120, the last entry, grizzly and grizzly. I, I think if you'll remember the root words on this, it'll help. Um, this gris, if you see the gris, that means it's awful, horrible, okay? And so that is, that's when we, when we come across a grizzly accident. This has to, it means a more kind of a gray color as in a grizzly bear. So I think, um, just, just be careful. I think most people would probably try to use grizzly for horrific or something there, and that would be the mistake. Ground zero. I'm just looking for you on page 121 just to say this is not capitalized. And here's a headline for the Denver Post. Uh, and notice ground zero is, is lowercase. We're going to go to the H's now. So H is on page 122, half. Um, it says normally that half is going to be followed. Um, it's going to usually have a, uh, not have a hyphen, right? So things like, um, you know, a half back in, the, in, a, in a game or whatever. Half mast and half staff. That's on the right-hand co column. When the college lowers its flag, it lowers it to half staff. Okay, the only time something would be at half mask is that it was on a ship with a mast or on a naval base. So I'm guessing most of the stories you're going to write are going to be half staff. Uh, page 123. Oh, my gosh, I wish I knew. Ha handheld. Boy, I wish I could tell you why is it, when is it, why, why do we have that? Yeah. Maybe it'll be like freelance and all of those. Uh -huh. 
hanger and hanger on 123. You know, the one that holds an airplane has an A in it, and that's why a lot of students tell me they remember that, airplane. And then the hanger where we hang up our clothes is the R. You know how we talked about was drowned and drowned? That's the same thing with hanged, hanged, and hung. Um, so you hang a picture, a criminal, or yourself. And the past tense is when, you're, when we're referring to a, an execution, um, you would be hanged, and it's a suicide hung. Oh, I think this is, a, I looked this one up, don't you think? All I'm, uh, now, don't you love English? Embarrassed had two R's and two S's. Harass, not so much. Yeah, that's what we're talking about there. And then um, I, I want to talk just real quickly. I don't, you don't mark this down, but I wanted to tell you about right after harass on the right-hand column of that page, there is an entry for hair lip, and I want to tell you a story about that. Years ago when I was teaching this course, um, I had a student who had a cleft lip. And AP had this in there, but all they did is they just had it as one entry, no definition, because they were using it, they, well, they wanted to say it's one word. And the student in the, in the middle of class said to me, he said, that's an offensive phrase. And we all went, whoa, we didn't know that. And so I said, I think we should write the AP. And we did. And so the change that you see now is a result from this very class. Yeah. And um, raising the, the awareness there. And so now you'll notice the entry says, hair lip avoid. Cleft lip is the preferred. We used to say cleft palate, uh, but cleft lip is, is, uh, is the preferred there. Um, and then on page 124 on the left-hand column at the bottom, headquarters. And it says it may take a singular or plural verb. Um, I find that a little bit uh, hard to understand, so I would, I would simply say, um, see if you can write around it so you don't have to use that, make that decision. But I wish I would, uh, I, and AP has sort of gotten rid of this, and I don't know why. Avoid headquartered as a verb. Just, it, it should be a noun. High definition, um, that is on page 126. And um, notice that it is a noun, one, two words. Everything else is a hyphenated. And high tech on 126 is also um, hyphenated. That's all I'm looking for there. The uh, cartoon says, everything's so high tech these days, now you have to know who's Palm Pilot to Greece. <laughs> Thank you. And then we have highway designations. That's on page 126 at the left. I'm going to just kind of let you read that through, but uh, probably the, um, the, the idea of a U.S. Highway 1, and it sho shows you how to do that. I would also look at interstate and how we do interstate. Um, just lots of different things there. Okay, and I can't read what the next one is, but it is, must be Hispanic on the bottom of 127. Um, this is one of those, it's kind of like with African American. Not all people who are black are from African American descent. So we can't, that's just not a generic thing. So let me just read this part about Hispanic. A person from, or whose ancestors were from, a Spanish speaking land or culture, Latino and Latina are sometimes preferred. Follow the pers person's preference. And that's the most important thing to ask. And then over on the bottom, of 127, historic and historical. Um, you know, all things that happened in the past were historical. Only a few things were historic, so let's be careful with that one. Um, page 129 on the left-hand column. We've got three of them there. We have home page, which is two words. That's all I'm looking uh, uh, for there. And you know, homeschooling has really come about lately. I'm, I've just recently added this because I'm seeing so many stories being written about it. And we, it looks like to me that in, unless it is a noun, um, it's going to be, every, a noun is two words, everything else from a verb to an adjective is going to be hyphenated. A lot of uh, hometown, I want to talk about this one that's right underneath there. Here's what I'm looking at here. When you have a hotel, so it says uh, Joe Blow of Boston. 
we would put apostrophes around of, of not apostrophe, commas around of Boston. Okay, that's what I'm looking for there. Now, this is another telling tale of the new, our new times here. Um, this is husband and wife. It's on page 131, toward the middle. Listen to this. I, I think, and this, I really wonder if this just came about with the, with the Supreme Court uh, here, you know, uh, decisions and other things that we're seeing. Regardless of sexual orientation, husband or wife is acceptable in all references to in a, any individuals in any legally recognized uh, marriage. Spouse or partner may be used if requested. So we're back to that, what, what do they, p and, and sometimes it's you may feel awkward, but better to ask that question, how people feel about it, than to, than to offend them. Um, and then of course there's a hydraulic fracking there uh, with a long explanation that we've already talked about. Now we go to the, um, go to the um, if and whether, and that, I, would you add that right above illegal on the right-hand column on page uh, 132? That's in the back of your handout, and I, I'm giving you lots of examples, but um, I'll tell you, when, when I see you again, if you have some problems with understanding that, I'll, I will uh, answer them, but whether is, I, whether is a good one when there's a, a list of possibilities. He doesn't know whether to go to the store you know, or something else, right? And now, again, a sign of the times, isn't it? A whole new explanation about um, uh, illegal immigration, which is at the bottom of page 132. Um, it says, entering or residing in a country using, this is for illegal immigration, entering or residing in a country in violation of civil or criminal law. And it says, use illegal only to refer to an action, not a person. This is a major, major change. So it's illegal immigration, not an illegal immigrant, okay? It's the action, not the person. And then would you go to the po top of 133 and that second paragraph there, it says, Except in direct quotes, do not use the term illegal alien, illegal, illegals, or, or undocumented. So this is a huge you know, shift um, from what we've seen before. Right over, the, over to the right on page 133, would you add the word impact uh, right under immigrant? What I'm looking for here is avoid using impact as a verb. At the bottom of that column on 133, imply and infer. Um, speakers or writers imply, and the listener infers, or the reader, right? On page 133, would you, would you do the first three there? Um, in, uh, when you use the word in, it says I'm in a location. In two is the motion of going into that. And then I want you to look at the prefix and the suffix. Uh, uh, is that right? Prefix, yeah, suffix. And no, there is no rhyme or reason to this, okay? It's not true, I'm not being crazy. Usually you're going to see uh, a, a hyphen with the, pr with the uh, suffix here. So, you know, the walk-in closet, okay? With a prefix, it's a little bit trickier. What I've found, if the word means not, you don't use a hyphen. Think about this. A person is insincere. One word. They're not sincere. Okay. Um, but there are some other tricky things. This is one I have to look up most of the time. The word include, we have already um, used when we were doing the A, a through C. So I'm just going to, uh, with 130, it, just to remind you that it's there. I want to talk now about incredible and incredulous which is at the bottom of the right-hand uh, corner. Not the same thing. Uh, when you're incredulous, you're kind of, I don't know about that. But incredible, it's like, wow, right? 
On page 135, and one of you were asking about this the other day when we were talking about uh, race and so forth, um, the word Indians, and, and this is uh, on page 135 in the middle. Um, American Indian or Native American is acceptable for those in the U.S. Makes sense, right? And, but uh, it says um, uh, such words as warpath and powwow and spa and brave and, and squaw can be, uh, they can be kind of derisive, so don't use those. All right, we're getting close to the end here. Injuries. Oh, yeah, this is a biggie. Um, page 136 toward the bottom. Now think about this, it makes sense. You, you, don't, you don't receive injuries. You, you don't go to the hospital and take one broken leg and two hips, you know, I mean, you don't do that. So you say, uh, you, so you suffer an injury, you don't receive it. Um, innocent, not guilty. This is one uh, that I, I, I've watched change. When I was growing up, uh, what I learned is that we always used innocent um, because we were always afraid that in a news story or in a, in a headline, we would drop the knot. That was our fear. And then over time, what we've kind of decided is there's kind of a difference between innocent and not guilty. And so what I'm telling you, just be careful whenever you write it then that you don't use the word not. Uh, all I'm looking for on internet, which is at the bottom of 137, and I know it goes on for pages there, but internet has a capital I. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, this is a language timeout. All right, just for a second here. This came from our local paper, and it said, uh, uh, I'll just let me get on this side to read it for you. It says, the insects also starve the tree. This is about beetles, okay. Like, the insects also starve the tree by eating the same um, material used to transmit nutri nutrients from the roots to the branches. That tree, for all intents purposes, is dead. Intense purposes. The word intense means tough, hard. He had an intense workout, right? I don't think that's the word we mean, right? I think what they really meant to say was intents and purposes. Isn't that great? I just had to put that in there, of course. Regard, air regardless. Oh, golly. There's no such word in the English language. The word is regardless. And that's on page 140. Uh, that's at the bottom of the right-hand column. It's a double negative, right? Uh, the cartoon says, what do you want for Mother's Day, Mom? I want people to stop butchering the English language. I want to be able to watch a TV talk show without hearing words like irregardless. Is that too much to ask for for Mother's Day? And, and he says, I'm buying you a basket of shower gels. You know. and, and then this one says, um, save up to 50% off, irregardless of our already, what's that say, bestest, bestest prices. And it says, go easy on our officer. She's an English teacher, and she's just hacking this thing down. Doesn't that remind you of that, um, the, the video that we saw about the, the people going around with their markers and, and so forth to the signs? Oh gosh, what can I say about it's and it's? I mean, even people that know better get this one mixed up. Um, we know the easiest way to remember is the apostrophe is saying a word is left out. And so I, even today, when I see the word it's, I go, in my head, I go, it is. Is that, is that what I want to say? And this came from our local newspaper. Is it correct? Does Illinois have its own? Does Illinois have it? is own tech no of course not and spell check is not going to get this guys it's just not because it's it just doesn't know the difference so um just remember the it is version and we're good so i think um let's see do we have any more jd oh i guess we've got maybe a few more here judgment all i'm looking for with judgment which is at the bottom of 145 notice that the e is dropped isn't that odd yeah just to keep you on your toes and then on page 146, uh, right-hand column, junior and senior. So let me talk about what we're talking about here. If we're talking about someone's name, Joe Blow Jr., um, when we write it, uh, all we have to do, so Joe Blow, and then it's going to be junior. 
right? We can abbreviate it and put the, um, um, the, the period. There is no need to put uh, a comma there. So just remember that one. Did I leave anything at your apartment last night besides my umbrella and my good judgment? Isn't that great? And uh, he seems like a, kind of a shady character, I agree. Um, and in the case, this is a word I think that we just slur when we say. Remember, it's a German word. It's not kindergarten. It's not garden. It's kindergarten, right? And so if you look at that, you'll know that it's spelled right. Hey, we're done. Whew. So I'm sorry that I had to kind of rush all of this, but um, I, I hope that this, maybe we can u you can use this as a review if you have some problems. So until next time, we'll do uh, the next letters. Thanks so much, and thanks, Derek.